Welcome to Hair Cutting at Home, the exciting new videotape series that shows you how to cut hair like a professional. On this videotape, you will learn many basic hair cutting techniques. You will discover shortcuts and trade secrets used by the professionals. Using these simple techniques and some practice, you can cut your entire family's hair like a professional in no time. Now here is a word from our hair cutting instructor. Hi, I'm Bill Harding. I've been cutting hair for 15 years. I want to show you some simple techniques for cutting hair at home. Using the proper techniques and some practice, you can cut hair like a professional. With today's busy lifestyles, home hair cutting will save you time and money. Before Bill gets started, we will cover some of the important information you will need to know before you begin your first cut. This videotape is divided into segments to help you easily navigate to the section you are looking for. Let's take a quick look at what you will be seeing on this tape. We begin by discussing the tools you will need. Next, we will examine the basic cutting techniques we will be using throughout this video. Then we cover some valuable tips and pointers to get you started. Finally, we begin with the hair cutting instructions. We will demonstrate four basic haircuts on this tape. Each can be modified by changing the angles or varying the lengths. The first cut you will learn is a typical boy's haircut. From preparation to the finishing touches, you learn how to make a haircut any mother would be proud of. The second style is a girl's haircut. Here we will demonstrate how to cut straight, long girl's hair with bangs. The third cut is an average man's haircut. This is a common haircut that you can master with a little practice. Our final type is a woman's haircut. Here you will discover several basic techniques for cutting women's hair. You can purchase all of the tools that you will need for about $20. These items are available in a department store or beauty warehouse. You will need a good pair of shears. They should be sharp and specifically designed for cutting hair. A good pair of shears will make your cuts more accurate and faster. You will need any comb designed for cutting hair. Some common hair clips will hold the hair in place while you are cutting. Don't try to cut without clips. If you don't have any, these can be purchased anywhere that sells beauty supplies. Your subject will appreciate you using a cape. A sheet or towel will work as a substitute if you do not have a hair cutting cape. An optional piece of equipment is a pair of clippers or electric razors. These will come in handy for trimming the neckline and sideburns, but a disposable razor will work as a good substitute. You may also want to use a spray bottle to dampen the hair. Using the proper technique to hold and cut the hair will improve your speed and accuracy. We will look at some basic techniques for holding the hair and making the cut. You will want to spend time practicing each of these techniques. The technique you will use more than any other is to hold the hair between your first two fingers. Using your fingers as a guide, cut the hair as straight as possible. Be careful to not cut yourself as you practice this technique. Use the comb to gather the section of hair that you want to cut. As you pull the hair outward with the comb, make sure that the hair is evenly distributed over the teeth of the comb. As you draw the comb outward, grab the hair underneath the comb with your first two fingers and hold securely. Once the hair is held in position, you will transfer the comb from your right hand or cutting hand. You do this by placing the comb under the thumb of the hand holding the hair. Your cutting hand is now free to make the cut. A variation on this technique is to hold the hair against your subject's cape. This is especially helpful for cutting long hair. Here you brush the hair downward and place your hand on the hair behind the comb. Using your bottom finger as a guide, cut the hair as straight as possible. Another technique involves holding the hair with a comb. This technique is used when the hair is too short to be held with the fingers. You comb the hair in an upward and outward direction. Once the hair is evenly distributed through the comb, hold the comb to the length at which you want to cut the hair. Now use the comb as a cutting guide. Remember that hair shrinks when it dries, so you will cut it slightly longer than the desired length. Take the time to rehearse these techniques until you feel comfortable with them. 
Rewind the tape as much as you need in this section. The hair should be damp but not dripping to begin the cut. A spray bottle works well for this purpose. You should work in a well-lit area. Good lighting will allow you to see the small details necessary to make a good cut. Select a location that has adequate lighting and is easy to clean. Take as much time to part and section off the hair as you do cutting. If you part the hair improperly, the end result will not be correct. You should spend about half of the time sectioning the hair and the other half cutting. Make certain that you balance the sections of hair. It is helpful to get down to eye level when checking for balance. You can also lift both sides of the hair to test the length for balance. Cut small lengths of hair at a time. It is much easier to make a mistake if you take off too much at a time. Keep in mind that the hair shrinks after drying, so cut it slightly longer than you want. Check the haircut after it dries for any problems. Comb it through several times to see if any variations show up in the length. Make any minor adjustments necessary at this time. We will demonstrate a boy's basic haircut. There are many variations that you may want to explore once you understand the basics. For now, concentrate on the fundamental steps. You will begin by dampening the hair. A spray bottle works well for this purpose. The hair should be damp, but not dripping. You begin this cut by sectioning off the sides of the hair. Take a section that's just parallel to the ground, about two inches of width. Same on the other side. Both sides should be even from eye level. Your first cut will be the desired length for the sides. You may wish to taper the sides downward to a point, parallel to the ground or tapered upward. Be careful as you cut around the ears. Next, comb the hair behind the ear, forward, toward the ear. Gently fold the ear forward and hold to allow an unobstructed view of the hairline. Cut in a circular or tapered pattern around the ear. Tilt the subject's head forward to give yourself a clear view of the neckline. You want to begin the cut in the center of the neckline. Select the desired length for the back and begin cutting toward the right side. As you reach the right side of the neckline, you taper the cut upward toward the ear and meet with a section behind the ear. Now you want to move to the other side. It is very important for you to get at eye level and set your comb to the length of the other side. Both sides should be to the same length. Once your comb is set to the proper length, begin the side cut. You follow the same steps as you did on the other side. Fold the ear forward and cut a circular or tapered pattern around the ear that matches the other side. Tilt the subject's head down and cut the remaining hair to match the length from the neckline to behind the ear. You should comb through the hair and look for any variations in length and trim them up at this time. Now that the perimeter length has been cut, you should begin trimming the sides. Since the hair is too short to hold with your fingers, you will want to use your comb to pull the hair up and hold in place while cutting. The key here is to look through the group of hair in the comb and you will see a short grouping of hair underneath that you just cut. This short hair is your reference guide. Use this hair to determine the length as you work your way up the hair. Work your way from the sideburns to behind the ear. Make sure that you start at the bottom and gradually work your way up. Always use the lower and shorter hair as a reference guide for length. Switch sides and continue the same process. Take off short amounts of hair at a time. As you pull the hair up, always look for the reference length behind the group of hair. You are now ready to begin work on the back of the hair. Comb through the back of the hair and section off a group that joins the two sides. Clip the back of the hair out of the way. Make sure that your subject is sitting up straight as you begin work on the back section. Once again, you cut the lower sections of hair first. 
As you pull the hair up and outward, use the lower hair as a reference guide for the length. Remember to work with small groups of hair at a time. As you make your way toward the sides, you will want to make sure that your length in the back matches the length on the sides. You should occasionally check both sides for evenness. Take a small group of hair from each side of the head and compare their lengths. Work through the entire area checking for evenness, making minor adjustments as needed. Remove all of the clips from the hair at this point as you comb the hair down. We're going to hold on to it, seeing the hair that's been previously cut underneath. Pull up the hair and cut the upper group to the same length as the previously cut hair underneath. Continue this process around to the back of the head and then to the other side. Comb the hair downward following the natural growth patterns of the hair. Okay, we're going to determine the bang length here. And we're going to decide that it's going to be about right here, knowing that it's going to shrink. So we'll cut a little center guide here. Now this is going to determine the length through the whole perimeter in the bangs. Yeah. And then I'm going to take and cut from here to this point and through the sideburns. Cut slowly as you work your way from the center reference cut to the sideburn area. Your cut should follow a smooth, gradual taper. Continue this cut on the other side of the bangs and trim up as needed. We are now ready to cut the center section that runs from the bangs to the back of the head. This one inch strip is called a mohawk section. Again, we'll have a one inch section running from the front portion to the back portion. This is the guideline or the perimeter that we've cut. And that's what will determine the length and through the top here. Cutting it slightly longer in through the crown. Continue the center strip around to the back of the head. Starting at the crown, lift strips of hair and hold with the fingers. Use the center section as a reference for length as you trim off excess hair. Continue this process moving forward to the bangs. Now we'll be taking section in vertical parts. The vertical sections of the hair must be trimmed to match the lengths of the top and sides. Starting in the back, select small groups of hair and trim them to a uniform length. Work your way toward the front in small sections. Once you reach the front on this side, start at the back and follow the same steps for the other side. An important step is to work your way through the hair and look for inconsistent lengths. Trim any variations in small cuts. This technique involves making slits directly into the bangs with the shears. It will create a softer look for the bangs. Make sure that you do not angle the shears with this cut. The final step in the cut is to trim up the neckline and sideburns. You can use electric clippers for this work or a disposable razor. That concludes our boy's haircut. Remember that practice is the key to success. A variation on this cut is black, naturally curly hair. This type of hair requires electric clippers for proper cutting. Here are some pointers. For very short sections of hair, use the clippers without an attachment and point the blades upward. Comb through the hair in an upward direction. To trim around the face, carefully use the blades toward the skin without applying much pressure. For longer sections of hair, use an attachment with the clippers. Select an attachment that will yield the appropriate length. 
Starting at the front of the hair, work your way toward the back with the blades resting on the scalp and pointing toward the back of the hair. Comb through the hair and check for any inconsistencies. Make final adjustments and comb out as desired. Next, we demonstrate a girl's cut with long, straight, fine hair. This is a basic cut that can be varied in the bangs, sides, or length. The first step in this type of girl's cut is to separate the bangs from the rest of the hair. Create a triangle pattern at the top of the bangs. You can vary the amount of bangs by increasing or reducing the size of the triangle. Next, you should dampen the hair with a spray bottle. Remember that the hair should be damp, but not dripping. Comb the bangs down following the natural growth patterns of the hair. You can see that our subject has a calic in the bangs. When dealing with a calic, never force the hair in an unnatural manner. Always work with the natural growth pattern of the hair. The first cut you make on the bangs will determine the overall length, so take your time and cut slowly. Evenness is very important in the bang area. At eye level, check both sides of the bangs for evenness. Now pull the bangs up with the comb and hold in place with your fingers. Remember to transfer the comb to your holding hand. Trim the hair to a uniform length. With the bangs completed, remove the clips and let the remainder of the hair down. Comb through the hair, following the natural growth patterns. Dampen the back portions of the hair with a spray bottle. It should be damp, but not dripping. Okay, now this is where we're going to do a front-to-back sectioning. Starting at the top of the ears. Use the first two teeth of the comb like a pencil to draw a line in the hair from the top of the scalp to the bottom. This line should be vertical and positioned at the back of the ear. Now proceed to the other side of the head. You will find the starting point for the line at the top of the scalp and bring it straight down behind the ear on this side. The hair should now be divided into a front and back section. We will begin with the back section of the hair. For this work, you may need your subject to stand. The hair must lay straight down the back for an even cut. The back of the hair must be divided into a top and bottom section. Using the first two teeth of your comb, draw a horizontal line through the hair at the tops of the ears. Clip the upper section so that you can begin trimming the lower portion first. Trim the hair against the cape in a straight horizontal line. You should get an eye level to make sure that your line is even and straight. Once trimmed, you may remove the clip from the upper back section of the hair and comb down. You can now simply cut the longer hairs to the same length as the shorter hairs underneath. You should be careful not to actually cut length off of the shorter hairs. You have many alternatives for cutting the sides. You may wish to keep the sides at the same length as the back of the hair, or you can taper the sides between the bangs and the back section. Follow the same pattern and length for both sides. You should get at eye level and compare the lengths on both sides. You may wish to soften the bangs. This is especially helpful for thick hair. Simply clip the excess hair out of the way and cut approximately one inch directly into the bangs. Avoid angling the shears or you may accidentally cut too much hair. To complete the girl's cut, comb through the hair and trim long irregular hair lengths. Blow dry if needed. That concludes the basic girl's cut. As you get more comfortable with your techniques, try some variations on angles. Our basic man's cut is similar to the boy's cut. For a detailed explanation of the cut, you may want to refer to the boy's cut earlier in this tape. The bangs, parts, sideburns, and length will vary significantly with this type of cut. After dampening the hair, section off the sides about two inches above the ears and clip the hair up on both sides. Check the sides from eye level to make sure that they are even. Trim the perimeter of the hair to the desired length. Remember to fold the ear back before cutting behind it. 
As you move to the other side, check the length at eye level before making your first cut. When trimming the sideburn area, you should comb the sideburns back toward the ears. Make a vertical cut up the sideburns in front of the ear. Run the comb up through the sideburns and use it as a cutting guide. Once a perimeter has been cut, you should move on to the sides. As you lift the hair with the comb, use the shorter lengths you just cut as a guide for the longer hair. If the sides are too short to hold with your fingers, use the comb to hold and guide your cuts. Once you have trimmed the sides, move to the back. You should section off about two to three inches of hair at the bottom and clip the upper hair out of the way. Make a horizontal cut across the back to the desired length. An eye level view will be needed to check the evenness of the cut. Once the perimeter of the neckline has been cut, begin working your way up from the bottom. Use the shorter hairs underneath as a guide for the longer hairs on top. Remove all of the clips and comb down the upper hairs. Cut the upper hair to match the length of the shorter hair underneath. You can look through the hair on top if it is not too thick and see the shorter reference hair underneath. Continue this around the back to the other side. Comb the bangs down with the natural growth patterns of the hair and trim to the desired length. The bang should curve to meet the sideburns on each side. You are now ready to move on to the center section. Taking a one inch section at the top of the hair, starting at the front perimeter. And this guide line, which is the length and through the bangs, will serve as a balance point. Cut the entire center section from front to back to the bang reference length. Continue this cut in the back section. Start at the crown of the head, cutting small sections at a time. This is the guideline that runs down the center. Cut no shorter than the guideline. Taking sections and working my way across the front. Seeing each one of the guidelines, the shortest point of this cut point is what you want to cut it to. Continue these vertical cuts running from the top to the bottom. Slowly work your way toward the front. Remember to use the center strip as your length guide at the top and the perimeter length as your guide at the bottom. Once you reach the front, start at the back and continue around the other side. At this point, you should work your way through the hair, checking for any variations in length. Trim any long hairs as needed. Remember the hair shrinks when it dries, so cut it slightly longer than you want. To put the finishing touches on your cut, use a disposable razor or electric clippers to trim up the neckline and sideburns. That concludes our basic man's cut. Review the boy's cut if you want to see more details on this style of hair. We begin the woman's cut by parting off the bangs and clipping the upper hair out of the way. On this cut, we will have a small bang area. Use the first two teeth in your comb to draw a line in the hair separating the bangs from the other portions. We will use a simple bang technique using a single cut. This cut requires careful planning. Make sure that the bang line is straight and even. Gather the bangs together to a single point in the center of the forehead. Hold the shears level with the floor and make the cut. Gather the bangs and lift away from the scalp. Hold in a straight line and trim any long hairs. Remove the clips from the upper hair and comb down. The hair must now be divided into front and back portions. Draw a line with your comb from the top of the scalp straight down. The vertical line should be located directly behind the ear. Do this on both sides of the head. Make certain that the two sides meet at the top of the scalp. 
After dampening the hair lightly, section off the back portion into upper and lower segments. Clip the upper section out of the way. The lower back portion can now be cut against the cape. You should have your subject lower her head before making this cut. You can hold the comb parallel to the floor as a straight edge guide or cut it freehand at eye level. Compare the two sides of the back for evenness and trim accordingly. Depending on the thickness of the hair, you can cut the remainder of the back section in one or several steps. Let down about half of the remaining upper hair and clip the other half up. This allows us to work with smaller portions of hair since the subject's hair is thick. Make sure that the hair is level and parallel with the floor before proceeding. Trim the longer section of hair to the same length as the shorter hair underneath. You should be able to look through the upper layer of hair and see the length of the hair underneath. Remove the clips and lower the final section of hair and comb down. You have several options for cutting the sides. You can vary the angles and curves in the sides according to the style you are after. Have the subject tilt her head down and determine the angle before making your initial cut. Follow the same procedures on the other side and check for evenness before making the first cut. Work in small sections and take your time through this area. You can soften the look of the bangs by making one inch cuts directly into the bangs. Make sure that you do not angle the shears or you will remove too much hair. Work very carefully with the shears this close to your subject's face. That concludes our video. Review the tape as often as needed. Remember, practice is the key to successful haircutting at home.